Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. A bit of controversy at the concluding portion of the second quarter. The Jets thought the half had ended. The officials said no, that the Seahawks had one more tick, and they made it count. Yeah, we've got a couple of looks at it. One, as you look at the reception, we have the clock superimposed, and you can see that there's one tick left, and then it does expire. Now, at the two, as you watch the completion to Tommy Kane, uh, excuse me, to, to Scancy, you can see the clock is still alive. Now, the official time is kept on the field, even though the NFL says it's the scoreboard clock. And at the two-minute warning, the official goes to the sideline and says, who are your designated captains? You see Kemp gets up and signals timeout. Now, Brian Blades is normally the offensive captain, but inside two minutes, you're allowed two for exactly this situation. So the Jets, coaches, players thought the half was over. They get one more tick, and Casey kicks it through for a 3-3 tie. A troublesome development for the Jets. Their brilliant young runner, Blair Thomas, who ran the ball just three times and gained 25 yards. He went out with back spasms, has not been back. So I don't know if we're going to see Blair Thomas again, but he was off to a good start. Yeah, Don, that's a big key for the New York Jets, too. As we mentioned, they use so many personnel changes. Uh, Blair Thomas is a guy that they count on so heavily for so many different uh, personnel changes, and, and he is the key to that running game. Now it's up to Baxter and Freeman McNeil. So that affects down the line the other uh, personnel changes that they're going to make. Uh, the uh, Jets really dominated the first part of this game. The Seahawks began to come back in the second quarter, latter stages of the second quarter. They both had trouble sustaining offense, so I think we're going to see a lot of long downfield throws in the second half to try to get something going. The first half statistics break down as follows. The Coors Light halftime statistics. For the you most part, that, pretty even. Yeah, but you see that time of possession at one time clearly in favor of the New York Jets, and then in the second quarter, the Seattle Seahawks began to come on a little bit. Uh, not great on either team. The turnovers even. Uh, the big uh, factor in that scoring drive of the Seahawks were a couple of huge penalties that really helped a great deal. And and then that kick on the last tick of the clock in the first half. Both quarterbacks did well for the most part. O'Brien hit 9 of 14 for 76 yards. Jeff Kemp getting the start for injured. Dave Craig hit 8 of 16 for 78 yards. Each QB intercepted once. Aguiar hits a long kickoff into the end zone. Chris Warren, in his wisdom, decides to bring it out and gets to the 19-yard line. A major collision there. Gets with good special teams coverage. John Galvin was down, along with Mike Brim. Don, the Seahawks start the second half with the ball, and I think under the circumstances, Jeff Kemp has had a marvelous first half for the Seattle Seahawks. They've not been able to run the ball that much, only 58 yards, so there has been a lot of pressure on Kemp to throw the ball. He just keeps his patience. Now, 8 of 16 for 78, very, very good. That one interception, a bad choice on his part, but other than that, he's played well. First and ten, and Kemp goes to John L. Williams, and the Jets are there to shut that down. Marvin Washington, 97, made the stop. As you look at the way it went for the Seahawks in the first half, you, you can see how they struggled. Now, this is a team that, that wants to run the ball. They got all these fullbacks, and they just can't seem to get it done. And then that last drive of the first half that resulted in the field goal, a couple of penalties really helped in their favor. Seahawks now going with the basic pro set, two wide receivers, split backfield, Fenner and Williams are the runners, and Kemp drops to throw on second and ten. He goes to running back Derek Fenner, he's ahead for a gain of perhaps four yards. James Haste was on him quickly. Fenner, 44, earned 75,000 last year, and he held out this summer. He wanted a raise of ten times that, two ten times that. And John L. makes like 950. Fenner made 75,000 and uh, led the conference in touchdowns scored. Led him in rushing touchdowns with 14 and total touchdowns with 15 led the American Conference. Now the quarterback for the Seahawks, Jeff Camp again aligns in the shotgun. Third down. Hawks need seven. Heck might have moved at left tackle. No flag. Out pattern and a throw and completion to Brian Blades. Beautifully done. A former standout for the Hurricanes of Miami, and during his college career at Miami under Jimmy Johnson, his team lost a total of two games. Stargell, the cornerback, excellent timing, perfect execution by Jeff Kemp. Boy, that, that's a confidence builder. 
Watch this throw. Ooh. Lagerman, Bird, 90. Bird really hammers him, but Kemp has got that strong arm. And when he was with San Francisco, he learned that timing. When to anticipate the break of the receiver with Bill Walsh and Paul Holmgren. Feels that's one of his greatest strengths. Seahawks keep it interesting. They had three games decided last year in the final play of the game. Six games decided in the last minute. Here's a throw to Fenner on first down. He's big. Kemp says that Fenner, when he's running well, reminds him very much of Eric Dickerson, who Jeff Kemp handed off to when they were both with the L.A. Rams. Big, almost 6'5", is Fenner. 230 pounds, yet with good speed and very good movement. And a great job by Jeff Kemp. He looks down the field and then comes back to the outlet receiver. You make the defense defend as you see Kemp looking at the menu there on his arm. The Seattle team uses that menu extensively. Dave Craig, with all his years' experiences, uses that menu on his arm, a series of plays. Kemp, bootlegs. On second and four, Jeff Kemp breaks it. So they do go to new plays to try to open something up. And Kemp makes the biggest play of this game for the Seahawks. Designed rollout. No question about it. Great confidence in Kemp. Good foot speed. Hey, you can tell he hasn't carried the ball much. He's got the thing out there. You want to protect it a little better than that, but there's no question this is design. That's his third carry of the day now. He's rushed for 41 yards. And of course, there's no person on the defense that's watching for that quarterback rollout. That's why it works so beautifully. 17 yard game. Brings the ball down to the Jet 37 yard line. First and 10 for the Seahawks. Jets. Line for a blitz. And Fenner picks a hole in the right side of the Jet defense and dives inside the 35-yard line. Jeff Kemp has been talking to his dad all week. His dad, Jack Kemp, now the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development in the Bush administration. Quarterback to Buffalo. Teams to, to AFL championships. And that's what Jeff Kemp lists as his strengths as a player. Discipline, good deep passer, scrambling ability. We've seen that. And timing. You've seen that with that completion to Blades. Now they see he's motioning people around. I'm getting confidence here. I can play this game. There's his weaknesses. His starting experience, his size. On second down and seven, Kemp again calls the rollout. This time he's going to let it rip. Goes to an open John L. Williams. And he is down to the 19 yard line. Mo Lewis, the rookie linebacker, finally made the play, but way downfield, a 16-yard gain for Seattle. Throwback to John L. Williams, and you know, Seattle really going to the back section of the playbook here. A lot of trick plays. The quarterback rollout run. Throwback to the fullback to John L. Williams. Running a little bit, but trying to finesse the New York Jets here in this drive, and it's working. Cam said his dad told him when he talked to him this week that everybody gets their chance. It comes in different ways. This is your chance, and you're ready for it. First and ten. Fenner with blockers in front. And Derek Fenner on a first down carry is down close to the 17-yard line. He got a couple of yards before the hard-hitting strong safety from Nebraska, Brian Washington, made the stop for the Jets. You know, Don... We've spoken a lot about Jeff Kemp. What do you think his chances of making this ball club were last April when they drafted McGuire, the kid out of San Diego State? They got Kelly Stoffer, a first round draft choice. They got McGuire, a first round draft choice. Uh, they got Dave Craig, longtime starter here. There's McGuire, number 10. And then you got this kid that's been around here for five years, and his last start was 1988. Do you think he felt his chances were good? Well, they're looking good right now. Performed very well. He has. He's been solid from the outset. Now second down and eight. Kemp again takes a deep drop. That's a fly, and he's almost picked off by Tony Stargell. That time, Kemp overthrows the antenna receiver, Brian Blaze, and Stargell had an open play on the ball. He can't get careless here now. He's had good success to this point in the game. And now's the point where you're feeling very comfortable. You see how far away he threw that ball from Blaze? He was five yards away from the receiver. For the rest of this game now, Jeff Kemp can't be careless. Keep that discipline that he lists as one of his strengths. 
So last Sunday when he came in for the injured Dave Craig, Jeff Kemp had not taken a regular season snap since 1988. Quarterback rollout worked pretty good. Third down, Seahawks need eight. Here's a timing throw. It was right where it had to be, but the receiver, Lewis Clark, wasn't looking at the ball. And breaking it up was R.J. Kors. One, two, three steps. The receiver's watching a defensive back. Yeah, you can't throw it much better. That was almost in the ear hole of the helmet. I mean, <laughs> that's hitting the target. There's no question about that. So Coors, number 25, comes off the field, and John Casey goes back out. His lone field hold, goal try was a good one today on the final play of the first half from 23 yards out. And he's looking now to break this 3-3 tie. 857 to play in the third quarter. Casey knocks it up and through from 34 yards up. And for the first time, the hometown Seahawks take the lead over the Jets. Seattle kicks off when we come back to the Kingdom. It's the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. By Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. And by Hertz, we never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz. We're America's wheels. Back to Seattle. The Seahawks kick off after they've just taken a 6-3 to three lead. Goes downfield a very fast down. Oh. Odegaard, he pops it up, and the Seahawks have it. David Daniels might have recovered, but it was Chris Warren who made the stick, number 42, as Don Odegaard is having a tough day. He had two foul calls on pass interference in the first half. The mistake he makes is when he gets up in the air here. Warren does put his helmet right on the football. Daniels is the recoverer. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. See, when he gets up in the air, you can't protect that football. You're exposed. Big break for Seattle. The Jets' second turnover of the game. Seattle's turned it over once. Now Kemp and the Seahawks go first and 10 from inside the Jet 15-yard line. Penner runs in not very far. Coming across to get him was 94 Scott Mercero, who's been tough at inside tackle. Mo Lewis, the outside linebacker, assisted. Well, the, the Seahawks have had very little, if any, luck running this football consistently. And the defensive line of the Jets are doing a great job of penetrating through that offensive line. That time, Mercero again jumps behind the block, catches the running back before he can get started. Seattle passed for 274 yards last week, ran for only 46. Oh, tight end. Time he throws. Touchdown, Seahawks. Uncovered. Travis McNeil is in for the game's first touchdown. Blown coverage by the Jets. There is no one around. Hard for a guy who was 6'5", 245 to sneak into the end zone, but McNeil did. So the Seahawks capitalized quickly on the fumble recovery. And they score the game's first touchdown and now up their lead. Two, ten. To 13 to 3 over the Jets, and we'll be back with yet another Seahawks kickoff after this. Ten unanswered points here in the third quarter to take a 13 to 3 lead. Here's another kickoff, and again it'll be Odegaard who fumbled the last return. To the 20. And out to the 23 yard line. Another fumble. Seattle oh. has the ball again. They're gonna rule it down. They're gonna rule that Odegaard was down. He did fumble, but after he hit the turf, so the Jets will keep the ball. James Jefferson makes the stick. 26. The ground can't cause the fumble. No question. Down by contact, and the ball comes loose when he hits the ground. Jets ball. No question about that. You can see it roll loose, so that's a good call by Pat Haggerty and his crew. 
Great second look. Our producer is Victor Frank, director Richard Klein, executive producer of NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill. We're coming from the Kingdom as O'Brien on first down, sprints out, stops and throws to an open tight end. But there's a little too much lead on the ball, and Mark Boyer from Southern California can't get to it. Now the turnovers last week and this week certainly have uh, hurt the New York Jets, although last week they beat Tampa Bay, overcame some turnovers. Today, those two, two turnovers, you see the touchdown just scored by Travis McNeil. And that's one of the things that Bruce Coslett and his staff wanted. No turnovers. Now the Jets have to open up their offense. Second down and ten. They led for virtually the entire first half until Seattle tied it on the final play of the half. And now the 12th man here in Seattle kicks in. The super decibel level crowd noise. A penalty marker's down. As Cortez Kennedy sweeps under Freeman McNeil. Yeah, that penalty is the 25 second clock expired. This is going to be no play. Delay of game. game. Offense. Jets are kind of coming unhinged here a little bit. There's the signal. You could see Bruce Cosler just grab his shirt, a signal to Ken O'Brien. Tune comes in. Seven minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. O'Brien steps in, and the crowd noise again rises up as O'Brien throws an out pattern and makes the connection, and the ball is lost. Al Toon had it and lost it. So the Jets have to gun it downfield now. Second down and 15. Again, a very catchable pass, I believe, by Altoon, don't you? A little half sprint by Ken O'Brien. Sets, throws. Altoon, through his career, has caught most of those. Look like a second and 15 connection now. Third and 15 arises for the Jets. And O'Brien surprises the Seattle defense again, going with three tight ends in a long yardage situation. They ran that tight end under before and hit a big play. But O'Brien gets no time to release the ball. Cortez Kennedy. You'd have to be here to believe how loud this building gets. Now you see an excellent move by Kennedy. Running around the center. No, I take that back. Running around 66, Cadigan. Cadigan's hanging all over him. For a big guy, still great agility. Look at Cadigan. Trying to drag him down. He still makes the sack. Aguiar punts from the end zone. Hits it downfield. Warren feels it. He has an open trap. And takes it down to the 25-yard line. Oh, that's two big guys hitting there. Warren and Baxter. Woo! Baxter bounced off him like a rubber ball. So the Seahawks are in position to possibly score again. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at the Kingdom in Seattle. The Seahawks, after a 31-yard punt by Aguiar, just got a 20-yard return from Chris Warren and the Seahawks, who scored on their two previous possessions this half, to go in front 13-3. Now have the ball first and 10 at the Jets 25. Yeah, they've certainly owned this third quarter. You look at the number of plays. The Seahawks have run. That's significant because last week the Jets allowed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just 11 offensive plays in the second half of the game last week in their win. And the Seahawks now have this big crowd of theirs back in the game. It, it was quiet for most of the first half. Fenner runs, breaks into the open, and James Hasty knocks him down. But this is a fumble. It might be. No, he's, he's counted down. They'll roll the ground, cause the fumble again. Nine yards on the carry, and I think you're beginning to see some fatigue in this Jet defense. It's a good defense. It's not deep. And they've been on the field the entire second half. And the ground causes the fumble. Ball down there. That's a nice nine-yard pickup for the Seahawks. A nervous one. Lonnie Young of the Jets got the ball. But it was a nine yard gain at second and one. All position at the 16 yard line of the Jets. Jeff Kent, his confidence growing, continues to direct this offense 
As the Hawks keep moving the ball, Fenner dives down to the 15-yard line. As we take a look at the Hertz ticker and the finals from earlier today. Six minutes and 20 seconds to play in the third quarter here at Seattle. Forty Niners have now come from behind as have the Raiders. San Francisco leading in the third quarter. Coach Knox a jet assistant as we mentioned when he was there the PR director Frank Ramos said he also sold mutual funds to members <laughs> of the team and whoever else would buy him. That's before coaches made a million dollars a year. First down. Jeff Kemp throws for the end zone. Man is open. Tommy Kane. Touchdown Seattle. Again, very little coverage. And plays like this are always reviewable. I mean, like came in very close to the sideline. Let's see. First foot. Second foot, yes. Excellent job by Tommy Kane catching it and staying inbounds. Seahawks have blown the doors off the Jets. As their wagon has come to a stop, and the Seahawks are now on the roll. Up 20 to 3 after it was tied. 3-3 three, three at halftime. Three possessions, three scores for the Seahawks here in the third quarter. And when we come back, they'll kick it off yet again. Kemp with good time. You see the feet of Blades, Brian Blades. He hooks up with Lonnie Young, and it looks like Stargell loses his footing. Nice throw. Great catch by Tommy Kane. Kemp has now hit 14 of 24 throws for two touchdowns. He's been intercepted once. Mathis runs it back for the Jets. Terrence Mathis crosses the 20. He's not down. He's across the 35. And out to the 37-yard line. They took Odegaard off of the kickoff return and put Terrence Mathis back there. Kemp, 14 to 24, two touchdowns and an interception. Seahawks have scored on three straight drives. They have scored 17 points in three minutes and 13 seconds. Time of possession here in the third quarter. The Seahawks have had the ball for about eight and a half minutes. The Jets for less than one. Twenty to three. Seahawks lead it after it was a tie game. Three three at the half. There's a time of possession. Down. We have an interesting thing on the field here. The headsets are down for the defensive for the offensive coaches of the New York Jets. NFL League rules say that if your headset is down as a visitor then the other team can't use the headset so they require the defense to take the headset off for the Seattle Seahawks. They've had some problems with the headsets here for a little bit so neither team will be using the headset until they get both sides fixed. Doug Knox well aware his Hawks aren't out of the woods yet. Had some fabulous days against Seattle's defense. Now they go to the run, and Freeman McNeil takes it up the middle on a first down carry. He's ahead to the 44 yard line. Gain of almost seven on the play as we now go to New York and NFL Live for an update. Bob? All right, Don, the Raiders get the game's first touchdown at the Coliseum as Jay Schrader finds Willie Gall. Was he open? I'd say so. Ten yards behind everybody in the back of the end zone. It covers 16 yards. They had trailed 6-3, to three, now grab a 10-6 lead in the third on their home field. Back to Seattle. Thank you, Bob, as we come back to live action, busting it up the middle and taking him across midfield and all the way down to the 30, to the 40-yard line of Seattle is Johnny Hector. The last line of defense, Eugene Robinson, the free safety, made the stop. Good job here by the Jet offensive line. You Real see the play. hole. Joe Nash 72 on the ground. The road grader got him. In case you tuned in late, the reason we're not calling Blair Thomas's number out with back spasms does not expect to return today. Rob Moore goes in motion. And O'Brien play faking, freezes the defense, then hits an open man for 
Again down inside the 30 yard line. Now he lost the ball to Rob Moore. So it goes incomplete and it comes to second down and 10. Al Toon, the intended receiver, he's you know, dropped two today. He missed last week because of the effects of a concussion. Al Toon does not look right to me. He doesn't drop passes like this, Don. Again, the ball is not tipped right there. I don't know if the, that concussion he got in the last preseason game against Washington has affected his eyesight or what, but that's not the altitude we're used to seeing. I'm sure he didn't want another concussion. He's looking at those defenders. It's, there's a stick behind the line of scrimmage by Jacob Green, number 79, gets Freeman McNeil. Loss of four yards on the play. Green was right around. The right tackle, I think Irv Eatman is in there presently. Irv Eatman and Brett Miller are splitting time. No, it's Miller, 82. Looked like they were trying to lead block with, with Johnny Hector, and Johnny Hector didn't even make contact with Jacob Green. Three thirty-five to play in the third quarter. Johnny Hector running well again. His last carry good for 16 yards. I'm not so sure if I'm Bruce Cousin. I don't go for it on this fourth down. And this one he got eight yards on. I mean, his defense has been on the field yeah, all second going. half. He is going for it. Burkett comes out. Toon comes back in the game. Mathis comes back in. Well, I have a feeling that Ken O'Brien has probably lost just a little bit of confidence in Al Toon. I'll bet he's looking for another receiver on this particular play. Burkett and Mathis come near side. Toon and Moore flip to the right. Fourth down, Jets need seven. Here comes the rush. There's the throw. The connection's made to Freeman McNeil. And the Jets have a first down to the Seattle 25 yard line. Lazar sharp throw by O'Brien, and he was really under the gun. A 12 yard completion on fourth and seven. Freeman McNeil out of the backfield Jefferson 22 you see the whole pattern he just makes that defensive back stop with those little stutter steps then runs away from him and he does pick up the first down drive stays alive Jets gutty call by Bruce Cosler one he had to make though his team needs big plays and just got one with 215 to play in the third quarter timing throw out pattern and Rob Moore can't get to the ball. Rob Moore suffering with a little bit of a hamstring pull can't really run full speed but he kind of fades that pattern a little bit when those quick outs are run you want that break to be very sharp and again that timing O'Brien three steps and throw it out there the pattern has to be precise not one of Ken O'Brien's career days Hector and McNeil have run the ball well they're the two setbacks behind O'Brien this is Hector. He takes it again for positive yards inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. So hard running Johnny Hector a nine year veteran from Texas A&M gets ahead for an eight yard gain on second and ten. Third and two. Uh, new personnel now for the Jets. The fist in the air looks like uh, three tight ends now going to be in the game. Hector will be the lone running back. This formation has worked very well for the Jets. Wide receiver wide at the top of your screen is Rob Moore. Third down, Jets need two. Hector. Jets get a first down inside the Seahawks 15 yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and I we just had a we just had a quick picture of the sideline. Uh, 4.0 yard average, not bad. Uh, but the Jets sideline have their headsets back on, so apparently they're back and working. Johnny Hector just passing John Riggins on the Jets all time rushing list. Hector a tough customer with the ability to leap. He was a long jump champion in the Southwest Conference. There's a handoff to Brad Baxter as Hector gets a rest and Baxter gets down to the 10 yard line. First down carry good for three. Joe Nash veteran defensive tackle made the stop. And now let's check the Hertz 10 minute ticker. As the game clock here in Seattle is winding down in the third quarter, 35 seconds to play in the quarter. And the Seahawks, who've scored on three straight possessions here in the third quarter, have taken a 20 to 3 lead after trailing most of the first half.
Raymond McNeil as markers go down. Jerry Wooden, an outside linebacker, number 90, made the hit. Ball start. Right guard. Offense before the snap. Prior to the snap. Dwayne White, the right guard, called for a false start. So the Jets are now set back to the Seattle 16 yard line. Tough call here. Second and 12. This is the 11th play of this drive for the New York Jets. Obviously, their longest drive of the second half, and they're going to let the quarter expire, Don. And a big quarter it was for the Seahawks as they score 17 unanswered points in the third quarter to break the tie and go in front, set by a score of 20 to 3. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. We're ready now to start the fourth quarter. Second down and 13 for the Jets. Here comes Freeman McNeil. Blockers in front. And McNeil gets down close to the 12-yard line. Gain of about three. David Wyman, number 92, the middle backer for Seattle, ran him out of bounds. Uh, Jets are pretty much in a position here being down 20 to 3, where this is four down area. As we look at the third quarter stats, the most impressive thing. Jeff Kemp was six for eight in that third quarter for the Seahawks. 69 yards and two touchdowns. And of course the big turnover by the Jets really helped the Seahawks. The game turned quickly and really a fumble punt return, fumble kickoff return. Sent the Seahawks on their way as O'Brien throws on the run and the receiver tight end loses it. Chris Dressel the antenna receiver. David Wyman there to hit him. Now let's go back to NFL Live for another update. Here's Bob Costas. Bob. Don, Steve Young will drop back at Candlestick Park. He's got time, and he's got the man, Jerry Rice. You know he's gone after making the reception 70 yards. Second touchdown of the day, his third of the young season, and the Niners at home in a battle of 0-1 teams, leading the Chargers 24-14. Back to Seattle. Where the Jets are ready to kick it off are ready to try the field goal by Pat Leahy, which they knock up and through, so they do settle for a three-point play. But they need far more, and Leahy will be kicking it off when we come back as the Seahawks now hold a 20-6 lead with 14-31 to play in the game. Erie by Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. By Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. Dave Craig, who's out for up to eight weeks with a fractured thumb in the press box, as his backup, Jeff Kemp, has done an admirable job. Chris Warren fumbles the kickoff return in the end zone. He downs the ball for a touchback. And the Seahawks in command of the game by a 20 to 6 score will go on offense first and 10 at their 20 yard line. Uh, I'll tell you what this week in Seattle Jeff Kemp got very little good press and he has performed very very well in a, a game where the running game has not worked particularly well and Jeff Kemp has had to throw the ball he has certainly responded. I'm, I'm sure above and beyond Chuck Knox's expectations. He's been. Well, he was just about perfect in the third quarter, and he's got to continue to lead the way because, as mentioned, Craig's injury is up to two months. Another throw downfield. It's up for grabs. Stargill wrestles for the ball, so does the receiver. And it looks like Brian Blaze is the guy who came down with it. A 19-yard gain. Oh, he went up after that one. This Brian Blaze is an extraordinary player. Last week, at his best game as a pro, was named interim captain while Dave Craig is gone. They both catch it. It goes to the receiver. Now Blades talked the rest of the receivers on the Seahawks staying out late every day after practice throwing the ball catching it with with uh, Jeff Kemp. It certainly worked. Knox says that Blades practices just like he plays. He catches everything on the practice field does it in the game. And now the Seahawks go first and 10 from their 39 yard line. Eric Fenner runs and gets it out to the 41. Blades with 
One glove on and one glove off. Yeah, I, I noticed that, uh, and I asked him the other day when we were talking to him, why the one glove? And he said, well, it's just something I started this week. He says, I give it away as we come out on the field to, to some youngster. And I write on it, God bless Brian Blades, and he says, I'm on my sixth glove. Just a little piece of memorabilia for some fan in the stands. <laughs> there it is. So he's got number six on there. He even keeps track of them. 50 years from now, that'll sell for $50,000. Easily. Mickey Mantle's jersey went for 72. Come on, come on. to be in it. John L. Williams screenplay and he is a load big John when he gets the open lane and he takes it inside the jet 45 yard line to the 43. Well with the number of plays the Jets had to be on the field in the third quarter after that 16 yard game pretty much got this jet defense worn out a little bit here. Throwback screen look at the protection. And frankly I'm surprised he didn't get more yardage than this 66 heck out in front. Hasty is able to get around there and assist along with Kyle Clifton on the stop but nice pickup Seahawks now firmly in control of this football game Don. They erupted in a span of less than three and a half minutes in the third quarter breaking open a 3 3 game they took a 20 to 3 lead now it's 20 to 6 for Seattle as Benner fights for yards on first down and the ground Chuck offense that Knox is such a proponent of kicks in just to run the clock with a substantial lead. As we take another look at the scoreboard on the ITT 10 minute ticker. 49ers have come from behind against San Diego. Could be a coaching change there. The offensive coordinator Ted Tolliver Ted Tolner went last Monday. Dan Henning under the gun. That's a shame, too, because that's a talented football team, San Diego. Working with a new quarterback, John Freeze. Yeah, they got a lot of personnel. Here's an out pass. Ball is caught, but Brian Washington is right there. They get the receiver, Travis McNeil, who caught his first touchdown pass ever in the NFL earlier today. About the only thing the Seahawks have to be from here on out is just careful. Jeff Kemp can't be careless. Take the receiver when he's there. If not, throw it out of bounds. Bird is right in his face. He's taking a chance here. Uh, the defensive back, Washington, was right next to Travis with McNeil when that catch was made. Just don't give the Jets the cheap turnover. Shots like that can have Jeff Kemp up in the press box watching with his friend Dave Craig, the injured starter. Shoulders going nose. Shotgun snap. Kemp fires. He's picked off. Brian Washington had it. Lost it. It's a jet ball at the 37-yard line of Seattle. No question. The Jets 37. No question. That's an interception. When Washington tried to put the ball away, it bounced out of his hands. But again, he can't be careless in this situation. Stargell is taking the ball. Gives it to the official. That was carrying it off the field on the day he's had I don't think he won any game balls yet. Yeah Edwin Bailey is down on the field. You, you see clearly an interception by he Washington. It. And that's Bailey down on the field. Stargell's taking the game the ball off the field on his fumble recovery as Brian Washington was the man who picked it off. Jeff Kemp steps center stage today for the Seattle Seahawks because of the injury to Dave Craig and responded very well. A big performance to help lead the Hawks to this 20 to 6 lead. They hold now 10 20 to play. Yeah, and I'm sure he was talking to Ken Meyer the quarterback coach there on the phone. O'Brien with a hard throw downfield and just off the turf Al Toon comes up with the reception. Good for 20 yards and a jet first down. Yeah, Jets pretty much have to get to a hurry up mode here. O'Brien sets, throws the ball low. Two makes this catch nicely. Can't tell if it is anything but a catch at that point. 19 yards on the reception and back in all pro form. Al Toon after a couple of drops. But the Jets need a lot of big plays and they need them fast as the game clock is running. 9.48 to play. Throw back. Play flicker. They're going downfield. And the connection is made to dress. Rob Moore was running a fly, but the Seahawks didn't bite. That Eugene Robinson, who rarely makes a mistake at free safety, was running right with him. That's an eight yard pickup, and obviously, Dressel is the outlet receiver. 
that Seattle defense of Tom Catlin's well schooled. Don't give him a cheap touchdown here. Moore goes down and try to, tries to do a stutter step. Maybe we can catch him here. No, he's just out of the picture. Didn't work. They'll take the yards, but they wanted the whole thing on that play. Now the Jets on second down, go to the run. And hard driving Johnny Hector, who's been pounding up the yards, hits inside the 30. Jets needed three. He got eight. And a first down. Joe Nash and Eugene Robinson on the stop for Seattle. Hector has run the ball just seven times and has gained 48 yards. Crowd starts up. O'Brien back to Hector and a penalty marker comes in. Interesting choice here. Holding Jets. Trailing 20 to 6. And obviously, they're trying to set up something with the play action. But with 826 left, uh, Bruce has got his list of plays Holding. there. Number 66, offense, still first down. 66 is Dave Cadigan, the offensive left guard. But now it's going to be first and 20. That's a uh, Jets eighth penalty of the day. Cortez Kennedy, another sack. You know, there's a new rule in the NFL that if one guy grabs a hold of the quarterback, they're not going to call that in the grasp. Maybe for big tough guys like Cortez Kennedy the rules are different. I mean Haggerty says there's no way he's getting away from this guy. That's a sack. Dave Cadigan couldn't hold him out. Nobody else has been able to this season either. Well for as big as Kennedy is he is very nimble. Again he ran around Cadigan 66 had trouble with Kennedy all day long. Whoops. Criswell breaks out of the stance another flag against the Jets. It's going to be second and a fortnight here. So now the Jets come a cropper and it doesn't get any easier. They have to go home to play the Bills next Sunday. Ball start number 96. And Buffalo has scored 87 points in winning its first two games. Ran up 52 points. Uh, and that's going the Steelers today. You would have to bring that up wouldn't you. The Bills also give up a lot of points. Second and 29. O'Brien throws, makes a connection, but way short of a first down. Al Toon comes down with the ball. Another marker down in the Jet backfield. Holding Jets. Well, this is a drive that trailing 20 to 6, 732 to go in the game. They just as soon forget. This game turned on one play after the Seahawks kicked a field goal in the third quarter to go up 6 to 3. The ensuing kickoff was taken by Don Boyd Odegaard. Holding 69 offense. Odegaard was stuck hard, lost the ball. The Seahawks were quickly in the end zone with a touchdown. Then they kicked off again, stopped the Jets. A punt was returned 20 yards by Chris Warren. Soon after they were in again, three possessions, three scores in the third quarter. And in the space of three and a half minutes, this game went from a tie ball game for a game dominated by Seattle. Second and 42. Defensive interference. Jets will get a first down. Oh, man. On second and 42, they're going to have a first down. James Jefferson That's on the hold. Unbelievable. We're going to have a slight delay here while the chain markers walk all the way back to the down marker. He's got 42 yards to go. Defensive holding, number 29, first down. How about that? I'm not sure they could have picked up a first down in any other fashion. See if we can pick it up. Tune releases. There's one hold. Uh, it's the holding on. 
Yeah, it's the defensive back on two. First down, Jets. Despite the score, 20 to 6 Seattle, Jets are going to keep the Seahawks defense honest as they run the ball right at them. Well, I think, again, there's going to be some questioning as to why they're running the ball here, but a lot of what the New York Jets do and want to do is based off play action faking. And they have to hold those linebackers at the line of scrimmage to get any space for the receivers to work. They also have to hit the home run ball. O'Brien looks deep. Here comes the rush. Joe Nash is after him, and O'Brien wisely throws it away before the rush can get there. Rufus Porter was coming hard from an outside linebacker spot. Yeah, that's see, that's the other problem the Jets have. This is not a bad offensive line, but it's also not a great offensive line. And I don't think the Jets' offensive coaches feel confident that they can have Ken O'Brien stand back there and the line protect him without uh, some play action passing, without the threat of the run. It's just not good enough yet. Third and three for the Jets. O'Brien oh. out. He's picked up. There goes Dwayne Harper. O'Brien's got the last shot at him and knocks him out of bounds. Receiver was not open. Burkett was the intended receiver. Ends up being a 41 yard return. O'Brien's. Is that his third second interception of the day? Turnovers have killed the Jets on this afternoon. That fumbled kickoff was the knockout punch Absolutely. that Seattle put on. And the Seahawks have capitalized in every opportunity since. Takes it inside the five yard line. That is a very soft and fatigued defense the Seahawks are now facing. Very soft, very fatigued. It was uh, really not on the field that much early in the game as the Jets dominated time of possession. There's Pete Carroll, the defensive coordinator. You can see the Seahawks offensive lineman, one, standing them up, two, pushing them off the ball. And I think Pete Carroll knows it. Everybody in that Seattle huddle as Pete Carroll has sent in the defensive signal has the same thought. They all want the ball. Somebody's going in here in a moment with five and a half minutes to go. Here's John L. Williams. He's in, but there's a marker down. Holding Seahawks. Offense still second down. Gentleman named Warren Wheat is called for the hold. He's replacing Edwin Bailey, who came off the field earlier with, with a leg injury of some sort. Second throw here, even with the formation. Yep, there you go. Williams on the draw play takes it inside the 15 yard line and down to the 13. Yeah, I, Chuck Knox has certainly been around the league a long time and so is John Becker the offensive coordinator for the Seahawks and right now they have in Jeff Kemp a very very solid performance at quarterback and even with third down and 10 or 11 whatever you want to call it I don't know if I take a chance of having uh, Kemp throw an interception so late in the game. I mean this kid's confidence is brimming right now so give it to somebody else to, to run. And he starts next week against Denver with a great deal of confidence. The next stop for the Seahawks up to Mile High Stadium. 
Darnell Williams taking on tacklers and he battles down to the five yard line stays in bounds and the clock continues to tick. Well there's one of the secrets I think to Chuck Knox. He is a great psychologist when it comes to players he knows that for at least the next seven or eight weeks Jeff Kemp is his quarterback McGuire is not ready and this kid's going to end the game on a very positive performance take no chance with the interception. I like that in Chuck Knox. And the way it looks right now Trump Seattle could have a share of first place in the AFC West at the end of the day. Kansas City Chiefs have been beaten. They're now one and one. The Raiders are beating Denver. Those two if that holds up will be one and one. San Diego is trailing. It'll be 0 and 2 if they lose at San Francisco. Now the field goal tries no good. So the Jets will take it over when we come back. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, Seattle, Washington, the Kingdom, where the Seahawks are in command of the Jets 20 to 6 after the game was tied pre all at halftime. 3.57 to play. Jets taking over on a missed field goal by Seattle, and now O'Brien throwing on first down misses. There's Kemp on the sideline, the holder for Casey, the kicker. The kick was missed, and that last pass by O'Brien was tipped again at the line of scrimmage. I think that's four now that he's had tipped at the line of scrimmage. Big 6-4. Throwing a catch. Rob Moore is out to the 30-yard line. Might have a first down for the Jets. Hurry up offense here. You know, Ken O'Brien is tall, but he doesn't throw big. He kind of hunches down when he throws that thing. So he's not really a big thrower, even though he's tall. Another throw to Rob Moore. Another gain of 10 yards. That will give that play up all day long, leading by 14 with 3.23 to play in the ball on the Jets' side of the field. There's nothing deep for the Jets. Seattle in the deep, too deep zone. Yep, they're not playing a prevent mode. Don't let anybody get behind you. There's the long ball. O'Brien's arm is as good as it was when he came up out of Cale Davis, part of that quarterback class of 83. He and Elway haven't lost a thing. Yeah. I the thing I admire most about uh, Ken O'Brien is just how many times he has been on his back throughout his career. He's averaged being sacked 35, 36 times a game for his career. Once he got sacked 72 times in the season. Now we look at the ITT 10 minute ticker. San Francisco pulling away on the Chargers. Raiders continue to lead. Statue of Liberty play here to McNeil. Raymond McNeil gets out of bounds inside the 40 yard line of Seattle. Gain of over 20 yards on the play. 20 yard gain and it's a first down. Very interesting play by the New York Jets. Uh, the Seahawks have their prevent defense in and they've got seven defensive backs. And watch what happens. O'Brien reaches forward to hand this ball to O'Neill. O'Neill looks like he's going to be a pass protector. They've already blocked the defensive back on him. Missed tackle there. Nesby Glasgow, Glasgow can't get him. 20 yard pickup. Drive stays alive. Rufus Porter. 97, third sack of O'Brien. Cortez Kennedy hit the other two. O'Brien getting up very, very slow. But he rolled up right the back of his right on the back of his leg. Goodness. O'Brien is trying to gut it out here. Troy Taylor is coming in the game. O'Brien comes out of the game and Troy Taylor, no time to warm up, has to throw on his first play in. But thinking the better of it, he decides to run and the all-time total offense leader from Cal Berkeley, Troy Taylor gets ahead for yardage out down to the 39-yard line. Brings up third down and 11. Cortez Kennedy again, fifth time that the ball has been tipped at the line of scrimmage, his second. I wonder if he plays tennis, he'd be tough at the net. <laughs> Excellent point. He's not tall, 6'1, part of that tremendous program at Miami of Florida. Cortez Kennedy, he was the third player picked in the draft last year. Jeff George went one to the Colts. 
Blair Thomas went two to the Jets and then Cortez Kennedy to Seattle. Taylor having trouble with his shoulder pads here along with the scoreboard. Jets having trouble with Taylor as everybody's gonna. This guy is a dominator. Oh. A throw, another pickoff by Dwayne Harper. He has two. Uh, you can see again the pressure. Kennedy almost is pulled down by Cadigan. Receiver not open at all. Moore was out there. There were two people covering Moore. Taylor still throws it. So uh, the bottom has kind of dropped out. Last year, Harper had three interceptions, already had two today. So the building blocks continue for the New York Jets. Young teams have difficulty winning on the road. This is a young team. They played like a young team. Played very well for a while. And the game turned in a split second and a fumbled kickoff return. John L. Williams works ahead, doesn't get much, didn't expect to, as the game clock will tick down now. 2.06 to play. As Ken O'Brien is checked out on the sideline, we'll go to New York for an update. Here's Bob. All right, Don, here in New York. Stefan Edberg. Oh, that's a shutout. Three sets, 2 4 0 oh against Jim Courier. Kemp having a big day and called on to start for injured Dave Craig will take the Seahawks down the stretch now as they'll continue to run the ball. Derek Fenner takes it on a slant. That'll take it down to the two minute warning. And yeah, we've got some thrills left here. If they punt, there's going to be a punt block attempt. That's for sure for the Jets. Yeah. Two minutes to go and two minutes before Jeff Kemp continues his very good one loss record as an NFL starter. No question about it. You can see the comparison between the two quarterbacks today. Now Kemp has thrown two interceptions but two touchdowns. 17 for 28. And as we mentioned at the outset of the of the game today uh, head coaches don't like unknown factors and I do believe that Chuck Knox felt that there was a certain unknown factor about Jeff Kemp. A lot of questions answered today. Seahawks under Knox could have turned their season today. As we're told that Ken O'Brien has a twisted ankle. That's why he's out of the game. And next week we'll tell a big story about the Jets. Do they continue to slide or do they come back against the best team in the American Conference of a season ago, the Buffalo Bills? Well, at least they're at home. That helps. Although the Jets last year were a better team on the road. Next Sunday, the day kicks off with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern Time. Many of you will see the Dolphins go against the Detroit Lions at Pontiac, Michigan. The Patriots go against the Steelers at Pittsburgh. In the 4 o'clock games, the Buffalo Bills with a 2-0 record and 87 points scored in those two opening victories. Go to Giants Stadium to meet the Jets. Seattle goes to Denver to play the Broncos, who are presently losing at Los Angeles against the Raiders. And the Colts and the Raiders hook up at the L.A. Coliseum. Colts fell to 0-2 today, losing at Miami. This is the Seahawks' first punt of the second half, and I would think the New York Jets will be all over this one. Darren Mathis, the lone man back. Big rush. Donnelly steps in and hits it high. Mathis will fair catch the ball at his 42-yard line. And there the Jets take over, trying once more to get something in the end zone. Best they can do today is put up two field goals by Pat Leahy. Taylor comes back in the ballgame. Apparently the ankle sprain by Ken O'Brien is severe enough that they don't want to take any more chances with him. Last time, as you see, the Jets had a 2-0 and start, and they surely won't have one this year. It was... 1987. Only have done it five times since they came in as the Titans in 1960 in the old all the old American Football League. Taylor with a big time arm and a oh. big time reception by Rob Moore on the fly. As he's out of bounds at the eight yard line. How in the world can the Seahawks defensive backs allow that to happen? Perfectly thrown ball. Robert Blackman is back there. 
50 yard throw right on the numbers. Brian Davis is back there. Unforgivable sin. This is right on the money. Moore catches it in stride. Bobbles it a little bit, but man, first and goal. Seahawks wanted to coast for this last minute, 50 seconds. The Jets are not going to let that happen. Taylor on the run. Throws. Boone comes down with it. Let's see the signal ruled not inbound. Nice catch by Al Toon. He really was not open, but at 6'4, six, 6'4 four, six, four and a half, Taylor puts it up there and Toon goes after it. Eugene Robinson, 41, 25, Robert Blackman there. Watch at the inline. The Jets with a touchdown, if they get it, an okay. extra point would be back to within seven okay. and ready to try an onside kick. Yeah, no question. His second foot came down out of bounds. That didn't work. Design play quarterback draw. That didn't work. Troy Taylor in his second year out of Cal Berkeley, a fourth round draft choice a year ago. Now the Jets call a timeout with a minute 20 to play. And perhaps Trump, the inevitable quarterback controversies might start to bubble up in New York. Although he just has one completed throw, it was a perfectly thrown 50 yard gain. Yeah, well, but look back at Ken O'Brien's performance. He was terrific. Uh, to late. Had no, gave him no time. Yeah, and, and also. There were at least three catches or three passes that I thought were catchable that were just clearly dropped. Now let's take a look at today's Cannon camcorder replay of the game. This was a perfectly executed touchdown pass by Jeff Kemp. It goes to Travis McNeil. No, I got the wrong guy. This goes to Tommy Kane. First foot down, second foot down, well executed. That was the Seahawks' 17th point in three minutes and 17 seconds of the third quarter to put the game totally out of touch. He was in that same corner of the end zone in the third quarter that Travis McNeil also caught his. Taylor throws. Al Toon has the ball and it's signal touchdown. Uh, Rob Moore has the ball, signal touchdown. I think that's Troy Taylor's first NFL touchdown pass, isn't it? Certainly check that. He's come in now. Hit five passes. That's the fifth reception for Rob Moore today for 86 yards and a touchdown. Let's see if I can find out about Taylor. Oh, he threw it. He threw a touchdown against Indianapolis last year. So his second. 114 to play. And the Jets have time for an onside kick. Here's the replay. And a minute 14 to go. This play is being reviewed. Let's see what we can get from another look here from the end zone. Pass is low. Uh, I frankly don't think you can change the call because of that picture. I think the play is going to stand. See if there's any difference here. Once the play is called on the field, the replay. Uh, no chance there to, to change it. The replay must have incontrovertible. You understand that? Look it up in the dictionary. Play stands as ruled. Touchdown. Incontrovertible evidence to overturn the play. So Rob Moore, All American at Syracuse, gets a six yard touchdown reception. And the Jets have their first touchdown of the day. Only their second of the season. Extra point by Leahy is up and good. Well, onside kick coming. You called it, Don. Any, anything can happen on this onside kick, too. You never can tell. We were, at, we were at the Jets practice here yesterday when they came into Seattle. The last thing that they practiced was the onside kick. Al Roberts is the special teams coordinator. And 
One thing you got to make sure is Al Roberts right there. Chuck Knox knows what's coming. He'll put his hands team out there. Those are the 11 guys he thinks were the best hands on the team. Leahy's good at this too. A former All-American soccer player at St. Louis University now in his 18th year with the Jets. And they like to do it on this artificial turf. You get a truer bounce as they hit the ball to an angle to a side. And really they try to get a fleet man coming down and take the ball and like the second hop. Right. Key here is the ball has got to hit the ground. If you if you kick it up in the air Seattle can fair catch the thing. So the ball has got to hit the ground. Leahy books looks both ways doesn't want to give away which way the kick is going. Oh tried to trick him didn't work. Try to trick the Jets. End result was futility. Right, he goes up to say well the ball's not exactly the way I want it and then gives it a little just a little heel kick. If Eric McMillan 22 is trying to get there the ball's got to cut travel 10 yards and Mike Tice the tight end makes the reception Seahawks take over. Can't stop the Jets can't stop the clock. So Jeff Kemp will just take the ball down put a knee down. The Jets powerless to stop the clock and Seattle's record will go to one and one. So will the Jets as Seattle gets set to go to Denver to take on Elway and the Broncos. And the Jets get set for the long trip back to New York to prepare for a team that they've really had big problems with in recent years the Buffalo Bills. Chuck Knox and the Seahawks should have a share of first place in the AFC West at the end of the day. The uh, Raiders are beating Denver. Yeah they play. Denver next week in Denver and then it doesn't get any either easier because they go to Kansas City. Chiefs will be in ill humor after being upset today at home by the New Orleans Saints. So that will do it. Coach Knox saw his team struggle throughout the first half unable to put up any points and finally on the final play of the half. A field goal tied at three all and then with Jeff Kemp pulling the trigger and some terrific special teams play by the Seahawks. The Seahawks capitalized in every opportunity and the Jets presented them with many in the second half. So Kemp a winning pitcher in his first start for injured Dave Craig and the Seahawks a 20 to 6 winner. 20 to 13 winner with the late touchdown pass by Troy Taylor. Both teams go to one and one on the year. Now for Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us in Seattle as we go to NFL Live in New York and Bob Costas. Bob? Okay, Bob Costas back with Will and OJ. We welcome those of you who just watched Seattle defeat the Jets, and we'll take you quickly through the scores and get some comments in the time that remains between now and 7 o'clock Eastern time. The 49ers are about to win their first of the year at Candlestick. San Diego hung with them for a while, but the Niners have pulled away. 31-14 late in the fourth quarter. Steve Young has thrown three touchdown passes. Two of them have gone to Jerry Rice, including a 70-yarder. Rice has better than 80 career touchdown receptions. He's only beginning his seventh year in the league. Steve Largent, who played a decade and a half, holds the career record for touchdown receptions. Not total touchdowns, but touchdowns receiving at an even 100. And it's pretty clear that if Rice stays healthy, he's going to blow on by him. Denver and the Raiders, this one has about a minute remaining. Denver is driving. They're deep in Raider territory as I glance over at the game, but they don't have enough time unless they could somehow recover an onside kick. The Raiders have the lead at 16 to 6 of significance for L.A. Roger Craig in that very thin injury depleted backfield for Los Angeles has carried 27 times for 99 yards. So a good day. For